it's uncomfortably simple out there, which means it's ridiculously complicated. What I mean by that is, it's no different. What I'm gonna talk to you about, whether it's life or business right now, is really no different than if, if this was a health conference I would come and they would say, how do we get healthier? And I would stand up here and I would say, I'd like you to eat better and I'd like you to exercise every day. And I would say, thank you very much and I'm out. (laughs) That's actually the answer. But we don't want to hear it. We'd rather buy $29 fucking apple vinegar shit. (laughs) We'd rather buy some fucking thing that fucking tightens your waist and performance enhancement drugs and fucking ass implants and all this other shit. (laughs) The reality is it's super simple. If for some way through a joke or an analogy or a conversation here today or an answer to a question, I can get you to start the process of genuinely being able to handle judgment because you finally are exhausted, exhausted of living your life based on other people's opinions, including Stranger Pants 96 and your mom, those two extremes. And listen, I know, how many of you here consume my content? Thank you, so for the ones that do, you know, my example is the anonymous comment from Sally Pants 49 or Rick Face or Jumpman 36. So it's the two extremes, it's you don't do things because somebody says you're ugly or you're stupid in a comment and you have no idea who they are and they're hiding between an avatar and some bullshit name over here all the way to your mom. That. That's what I spend all my time on. From this person to that person, why is that dictating you? This one makes a lot of sense to me. Ironically, that one makes a lot of sense to me. You all went through high school. You all lived life trying to do shit to impress other people. And we still do it at scale. The only thing, listen, I'm not out here living my life trying to convince people how to make money like me because making money is a talent like singing and playing sports. Some people are better at it than others. Can it be taught? Of course it can be taught. You can always be better at something than you were at a starting point. I can be better at dancing and singing and basketball, but I'm not fucking gonna be LeBron or Beyonce. Do I think people can go from the kind of person that can have a $40,000 a year business to a $3 million a year business? Yes, I do. Do I think the person that has the natural skill of a $40,000 a year business can make 45 million a year? No, I do not. Do I think that we completely need to recalibrate our relationship with what success looks like? Yes, I do. Like, we're out here talking about making a million dollars a year is the entry point to balling when the 1% of Americans' top earners start at 440,000 a year. If you make 440,000 dollars a year in here, you are in the 1% earners in America, one of the richest countries in the world. We're fucking confused, my friends. There's people in here that are 29 that, are, that think their life's fucking over next year because they're gonna turn 30 and they don't have their shit figured out. There's fucking 88 year olds running around Jersey that haven't fucking figured out their life. I don't know what miraculous situation of my parents having sex at the right moment, me being born in the Soviet Union, me growing up in Edison and working in a liquor store in Springfield, but I'm telling you right now, whatever those dynamics were, I sit here back home with an amazing amount of gratitude to my perspective. Forget about anything else I've got going on. I'm trying to spend the rest of my life to articulate my perspective so that you can debate it against yours. I'm not trying to have you have my perspective. I'm just trying, I don't think, by the way, I don't think I'm right. I don't think I'm right. I don't think I've earned the ability to tell anybody anything. I think if I disappear tomorrow on some tragic accident, I trend on Twitter for a half a day and then everybody moves on with their lives. Like, I get it, but I'm telling you, if you're fucking here today, please hear me. I can give you every tactic on LinkedIn and TikTok and Facebook and email and text. I can give it to you. You keep watching what I, listen, you wanna have business success? Watch what I do for the rest of my life publicly copy it verbatim, but then put in your shit in it, 
and I promise you, you'll be successful. Cause I'm fucking really good at my shit. That, my friends, is not the interesting part. The interesting part is, why can I do what I do? Why am I not scared to make content on TikTok when it's all teenage people, right? Why am I willing to spend a ton of time having a ton of different shit going on and if something fails, I don't give a fuck? I have Vayner Media, I have Vayner Sports, I have empathy, I have a million things going on. Inevitably, some of those things are gonna fail. Things that shouldn't fail, but they're going to. When you have 87 things, you're not gonna go 87 and O. My ability to deal with your judgment when I go 70 and 13 is my strength. Why are you only doing one thing? Why don't you do shit? Cause you're fucking scared. The question is why? Like I'm just trying to get to why? Like who? Like who's gonna cast judgment? My friends, every person here that's not 100% happy, including myself, is not doing something because of judgment of somebody else. 100. That's the fucking game. More importantly, how do you start chipping away in a world where you were parented or your environment made you that way? How do you chip away? Here's how. You storytell. That is the responsibility and almost the way I feel I live. I have figured out over the last decade or two, really actually half decade to a decade, oh, I have gift for gab. Same reason I could sell, same reason, oh, I'm a good storyteller, so I'm gonna give you stories. Why do I put out those analogies, those clips saying the same shit? Because there's only 15 truths. I just have to say them a million different ways to catch you at the right time with the right slang on the right platform at the right moment. I appreciate you too. I appreciate you too. You know how in high school you were worried about your zit and fuck, I used to be scared as shit when I had a zit. I was like fuck, I don't wanna go to fucking school. What I learned through life was, nobody gave a fuck about my zit, they were worried about their zit. The number, why do I tell that story? Because right now, people here are in debt or can't do something because they're just staying above ground, but that's because they bought a house that was too expensive, not using rooms in that house and they don't have the humility to sell that house and go back to rent because they don't want their friend from high school or their grandma to judge them because we manifested that you have to own a home. And if you did and now you're not just staying above water and you sold that home and moved into a shittier neighborhood or a smaller house or rented, now your actual life can open up but no, the ideology of owning a home and the inability to take a step backwards to take three steps forward is gonna make you unhappy till the end. Come on, Gary. Yes! Yeah. From the extreme of getting somebody in here this evening to go home and sell their fucking house to getting, to getting, to getting one of you to not buy a pair of off-whites that you can't afford, in those two extremes are no different than fucking Sally Pants 98 to your mom. This is a game of the edges. This is a game of the edges. Everybody's focused in the middle. 90%, 95%, 99% of the shit you think about and you consume is in the middle so you don't pay attention to the edges. This is a fucking game of the edges. Once you get your relationship down with the seven fucking people that matter the most in your life, and actually get to the place of saying, I love you, but fuck you. And once you get to that same relationship over here, which is super simple, I'm not sure I even know you and fuck you. That's the game. Now, don't confuse fuck you. Let me explain what I mean. I roll with empathy and compassion and sympathy. This isn't fuck you for hate. This is I'm not willing to live my life under your judgment of what life is. Because eventually, let me tell you the biggest mistake people make that I've observed through the millions of interactions over the last decade that I consume. There are people right now that are living their life 
still in their 40s and 50s based on the opinion of their parents. They think they're doing the right thing because they fucking actually love their parents. I get it. I love my parents so uncomfortably much, it scares me. But they live it because they're appeasing lawyer, two kids, living in this area, doing this job, don't take risks because we told you not to, we came from a generation that didn't, so you're doing that. Or I was once an entrepreneur and fucked it up and so we were scared, so now you don't do that. They live for their parents. They think it's good because everything's good because you're doing what your parents want, you feel like it's good, and then life keeps going. And then what starts happening is they start to resent their parents. Because now they're popping to their 50th birthday, their 60th birthday, their 65th birthday. They get a health scare and they're like, fuck. I'm not doing what I wanna be doing. My friends, until our society, and this country especially, redefines success in being happy, not being rich, everybody will continue to go down the path that we're seeing in our society of depression, anxiety, drugs. I believe it the most. Do I believe that there's people here that are lucky, that are talented and love something and they build a business that they actually love that process and it makes them a lot of wealth? Yes, I do. They're, I'm one of them. I genuinely love my shit. I love it the most. Thank God it also manifested in financial success. But if you watched my behavior, you would realize it's the chase. When and if the Jets win the Super Bowl before I buy them, I'm probably... When and if the Jets win the Super Bowl before I buy them, you're gonna see a video of like 61 year old me being, fuck, now I gotta buy the Knicks. <laughs> what I realized about me, about why do I love garage sailing? Why have I probably rolled up some people in this room's house to buy shit over the last 10 years? It's because I love the hunt. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning on a Saturday after working 90 hours a week because my hobby is to go to fucking Old Wick town-wide sale or fucking Metuchen's town-wide sale two times a year to go through people's trash and buy shit for a dollar that's worth seven. Not because of the dollar and the seven, but because maybe, just maybe, this is the day that I roll up on somebody's house and find a rare 1947 Cracker Jack Green Lantern ring worth 80,000, and even the 80,000 doesn't mean shit. I get paid more to stand right here than that. I just want the fucking hunt. By now, you should have at least known it's funny. I'm mad famous for being unknown.